Thank you so much. I wish I could, uh, you know, be there in person with you, but here I am in California, and we switched places, because when we met, I was living in Atlanta, and you guys lived in California. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I'm so happy that you're married, and that you're in California, and that you're doing yeah. so well. It's wonderful. Before we even start, again, I just want to say, we read the book when I was going through, we read the book Hope Heals. Uh, when I was going through uh, the worst of, of my own journey, and uh, it, I can't tell you how helpful that was. Literally, it was like bedtime stories with mom and dad. They would read it to me every night. Like sometimes I'd read the chapter, sometimes they'd read it. And um, man, just like hearing your story, and literally actually it's right beside me on our bookshelf here in California too, so um, always Aww, have it. that's so cool, David. What a blessing. My name is Catherine Wolf, and at 26 years old, I suffered a massive brainstem stroke, and it was caused by an AVM, which is a malformation of blood vessels that I never even knew that I had, honestly. It was a birth defect, quote-unquote, that grew mm. in my brain and ruptured when I was 26, causing the massive brainstem stroke that's left me um, severely disabled to this day. I cannot walk on my own. I use a wheelchair and occasionally a cane. I do not drive at all. I um, have a face that's paralyzed on one side. I have a non-working hand. I have a... Deafness in one ear, I have extreme double vision and very limited sight in one of my eyes and many, many, many other major issues, but largely I am doing just great um, ten and a half years later and have gone on to have a, a baby and... Mm. My body is hugely recovered from the tremendous, um, nearly fatal stroke. And yeah, I'm doing really, really well. Yeah, it's insane. And um, I mean, your journey that I read about in the book is incredible. And I know that it was a long process, but um, I guess when you, what was like one of your first memories? Do you, do you remember anything after the, the bleed? No, I have no memory um, for almost two months once the bleed happened. But um, early on, my, er, among my very earliest memories are that of my six-month-old baby who, um, who was around when I had the stroke and was rapidly growing and changing um, as the months were going by post-stroke. So I was mm -hmm. watching my little six months old baby grow and become an eight months old baby when I was finally able to quote unquote wake up and um, start to heal. He was rapidly growing and growing. Wow. Yeah. So in those days, I mean, w as you started realizing what had happened, I mean, were you able to process it at all or how long did that take? No, no, you're right. Um, to ask that, it would take many months to really understand what had happened. I just couldn't wrap my mind around it, honestly. I was perfectly healthy, no medical history of any kind, no family history, nothing. I didn't smoke. I mean, there was absolutely no indications mm. that I would have a massive stroke. I was perfectly healthy. Um, with a new baby, and um, yet I had this horrific um, malformation in my brain that would rupture. So it would take months to process it. Plus, your brain is so compromised when you've had um, just a major, major incident like this that I don't think my brain could fully understand or comprehend what had happened for right. many months. So it's both just the magnitude of it and then also the actual injury that kind of made it hard to comprehend. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. And I get it because uh, I just remember 
there were so many things happening and not really being aware. I had a concussion and that was the extent of my head injuries, but still it took me months just emotionally and like even like having to try to live again was kind of when I realized, oh my gosh, wait, this is what it's going to be like? Right. Yes, yes, exactly. So in those early days, I mean, that must have been just the hardest for Jay and your family and the people around you. Um, Yes. Do you want to talk about kind of their journey and their support? Yeah, their their support has been tremendous and um, I think made a huge difference in my recovery. And particularly early on, just Jay's like unbelievable advocacy, really just Mm. standing with me through all of this, going to every doctor's appointment before every subsequent surgery and just really being able to be in there with me along with many many wonderful family and friends who were just really in the thick of things supporting us through this I um, made a tremendous tremendous difference my um my mind was in a very different place than I many people's are because I was able to really focus on getting well Mm. without having to focus on calling the insurance company and talking to 30 doctors and filling out thousands of pieces of paper and all the logistics of Uh, um, this, which I think is so important um, in medical crises to have people who can really handle the work of it all so you can handle a different kind of work, the work of getting well. And I think that's critical in these situations. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. My parents were that for me. I mean, I don't even remember. I just knew like, oh, we're going to Shepherd Center. Okay, cool. (laughs) But that must have been a lot of different... Yeah. yeah, it's so devastating to think of people going through these type things alone with no one to help them. It's oh, just man. horrific to think of how debilitating it would be on every level to have right. this no say. Right. That was definitely, I mean, I even have a song now called Love is What Keeps Us Alive, and it's um, kind of literal for me. It's like, I wasn't suicidal, but I, I, I could ask the question, like, what's the point of living at that point right. and um you know it was at the the love and the support and the encouragement that i received in the early days that really like helped me through that so oh yeah yeah gosh absolutely and i remember you talking about your church like doing a lot of stuff at the time oh, for you oh my gosh and- yes Oh my goodness, our tremendous church community, all of our friends who'd been in our community groups and Sunday school classes and everything. I mean, they all just really rallied. People would bring meals to the hospital for my um, husband and family to eat because I wasn't even eating food yet. I was still on a feeding tube, but people just wanted to support the people supporting me. It was really amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Layers on layers of support. And that's kind of a testament to uh, the church community, honestly. Wow, that's that's how it should be. It absolutely is. You know, people really, for 10,000 very legitimate reasons, which I understand, give church a really bad rap. But a church community can rally for you in a very unique way. Um, that They just somehow seem to get, like, suffering and standing in the gap and support you in a very unique way and I, I'm a huge I'm church advocate that that can be yeah. and really a group that will rally around you just when you need it most that is yeah. um, about something more than the specifics that's about a bigger cause but thus rallies for every individual it's powerful yeah so question in those yeah. in those days when you're first, you know, in uh, what was it, Casa Colina? Casa Colina. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, like in in some of the earlier days, were you? I mean, what was your why? 
What was my why? Yes. You're asking? Yes. Um, good question. There were many. Um, the baby was a huge motivator for mm. me. Oh my gosh, the baby getting well to take care of that baby again was among the tops for sure. Um, even more than going back to quote unquote a normal life with my husband and baby was the motivator of my faith that really pointed me to um the purpose in all of this, that I had really a unique purpose in this terrible pain. Yeah. And that um that God didn't make a mistake with my life, but instead that um he had really um yeah, th that this would really be a unique assignment in life, but that I was um up for a unique assignment. And I think <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, that there was a sense that like this is really hard, but um, this is also really powerful and profound and really a unique position in life, and that I could I could rise to the occasion because God was working through me clearly, mm -hmm. and this was no accident. Yeah. Incredible. Um, well, that that's kind of been a thing for me too I, I would say that um the difference with christians in in tragedy is that um god can can redeem the broken things and that's what i've seen in your yeah. story and uh seen in mine and and a lot of others just this idea of redemption and and it's it's partly because of the um like sometimes i just i'm like an engineer so i'm super pragmatic and i'm like Christianity yeah. just works like the concept like forgiveness works um like community works and and yeah. it's so cool to see how those things play out um in a believer's life during tragedy because in the good times that's when people bash on the church because it's like oh where they're just kind of like living and they're hypocrites right. and whatever but I think really you see the Christian community shine in tragedy. I I could not agree more. And I love um, from a pragmatic engineer's point of view <laughs> yeah. that you see that because I don't have that brain, but the, the brain I do have that I think works sometimes um, is, is seeing that same picture pretty profoundly. Yeah. That, um, Christianity works because you see in terrible suffering, um, hope yeah. that you have a reason to get out of bed in the morning and that you have people rallying around you in a unique way that are really telling you what you know to be true when you can't really think it for yourself yet. Totally. You, um, you really have the, the unique perspective of others entering into suffering with you because they are about something beyond just themselves as well. And it's very beautiful. Yeah, incredible. One last question because I don't want to take up too much time. But, yeah, yeah. Um, what is your message now? Like what do you, what do you, when you do, uh, and I know you've done a lot of public speaking now, like what are you, what right. is kind of your well, you probably have a lot of messages too, but what is what is one of your main messages that you share? Yeah, um, well, there, there's probably several core messages that I share. For sure, one would be that there's no such thing as detours in life. Mm. That, you know, the weird Western world has really lied to us and fed us to such a bag of lies that... Things have to be exactly like we thought they were going to be when we were kids to be happy, quote unquote. And that's so ridiculous mm -hmm. that tr true happiness of any kind, joy in any situation is found in embracing what is, not wishing for what was. Wow. It's living into the new story and not considering it a detour, but actually the path that you're supposed to be on for some reason. And I, I think that is 
crucial in our world. And the, the other core message would be that we are all disabled. Even the most able-bodied person on earth is tremendously disabled. They just don't, you just don't see that on the outside of their body. But wow. internally, we are all coping with life. We all have wheelchairs. We all have terrible um, limitations and constraints from what we have been through in the past, what we are going through, all the issues happening inside of us that we are all really disabled and whether or not we choose to see that um i think it's proportionate to the ability we have to be free from our stuff wow that is inc- i got chills when you were talking that's incredible oh you're so <laughs> sweet boy it's true it's true it's yeah true. yeah we all have a wheelchair of some kind i'd, I'd love to introduce you to my wife now hello it's <laughs> yeah. christy Hey, Christy, I'm so glad to meet you over the phone. I know, this is amazing. We have been very um, blessed by a lot of, a lot of your words the, these past few years, and it's just an honor, oh, to, an honor to talk with you. I've been listening oh, this whole time. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. Oh, you're so welcome, day. David. And Christy, it's <laughs> wonderful to get to talk yes, to you, too. Yes, you as well.